There we go. Cool. Okay. Uh, now the recording started. Let's make a start with this. So thank you all for attending, especially the earlier time slot, given the, the downstream meetings that um, are conflicting with this today for Red, Red Hatters. Um, and thank you, Felix, for running the meeting last week while I was out, while my household was sick. Um, the joys of having a three-year-old. Um, the agenda um, for this week, um, there was no um, agendas to begin with at the start of today. So I've kind of gone in and um, written a whole load of stuff down just as a kind of bit of a catch up for myself after last week. Um, and also this initial point just to set the scene of what I think we should be doing over the coming weeks and meetings uh, to kind of move this whole thing forward. Um, so with that said, um, the first item here, um, just see if we can make this bigger up still, just so it's a bit more readable. Get rid of this. Um, so I kind of wanted to set out um, what I think the approach should be and what my approach is up until now, and the comments welcome, obviously, and corrections if people think this isn't going to work. Um, but how I, I, I kind of see going forward, uh, the, the process going forward at this point, um, I still think we need to start, we, we need to define at a high level um, you know, certain aspects of the SIG, like what, what a SIG is actually going to be, um, how we're going to be adding and removing SIGs, like really high level things like that. There are points after this in the agenda that will kind of speak to speak to these individual things, but at a meta level, like I think that's the starting point where we need consensus. Um, defining the initial set of SIGs, I know in the previous meeting two weeks ago that I was attended, we kind of went through things and um, started talking about which SIGs we thought should and should not be present to begin with. Um, but working through that is, a, is the kind of next logical step in my head for the process. Um, populating the SIGs, now I don't think we spoke about that before, but um, I think we should be aiming uh, to kind of run through this process probably with Qvert Qvert as the example project um, and populating SIGs with approvers and code reviewers from that project. Um, we might not fill all of the SIGs with people from that project. There might be things that just don't apply to Qvert Qvert. I, I don't know, maybe, hopefully not. Like it's the core of everything uh, with, with, the, pro with the, um, the project upstream, I guess. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it does. But that seems like a logical place to start with the actual population. Of these things of SIGs. Um, so that would be the next, next logical step. Once populated, actually creating all the collateral for each of the SIGs. Um, I know there's a point later about talking about Slack channels, but just documentation, whatever, however we, 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 we're going to structure things, um, getting that populated once we've got people um, aligned with each of the SIGs. Um, so hopefully they can help out potentially, and it's not just me creating things. Uh, just come message. Uh, that, sorry, um, I, I hide my notifications, so I just get a ping <laughs> anytime that people do that. Sorry, I should really mute them as well. Um, yeah, and then um, actually applying uh, the SIGs to Qvert Qvert. Um, so in terms of the owners files, actually updating things there as well. Um, and structurally, that's quite a lot of churn. Um, so I, I kind of want to hold off on doing that until we've got the kind of meta stuff to find out. And then apparently, uh, apparently uh, potentially repeating the process across other sub projects as well. I might count spell. There we go. Um, so yeah, so I don't know, CDI, HCO, um, other kind of core projects under the Cuba umbrella as well, just repeating that, the, the steps above um, of populating things, um, creating the, the required uh, material if anything's missing. Um, and then, you know, setting the SIGs out in the owner's files for those sub projects. So at a, at a high level, at a meta, a meta level, are there any comments or concerns with that approach going forward? Is there something obvious that I've potentially missed? Um, yeah, any comments on that? So just quick question. So you are actually trying to map each uh, each project to at least one zig, I guess, right? Yeah, um, yeah, that would that would hopefully be. Um, for, yeah, for for certain sigs, it probably doesn't apply for the the scale, I guess. 
um, that might not apply, but it, it's, as much as possible, just trying to map them. Uh, I would just ensure that where mappings apply, uh, 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 logic, logically work, but we're actually doing that. Yeah, thanks. I think that uh, answers my question. Thank you. So you're not defining what are the six, just where, how to define them? No, so, there we go, the mute button is broken. Good old I3. Uh, so the initial step is to, to kind of at a very, very abstract high level define what a SIG is, yes. And then um, the, from that, then actually defining the initial set of, sets of SIGs. Um, we, go on, sorry. Okay. I think if I remember correctly, it was uh, this week uh, really quickly, but I don't remember anything. Uh, but one of the, at least I remember one of the things there was that um, that, at least that was my opinion, but uh, not everyone, I'm not, I'm not sure that everyone was, uh, was follow, was agreed with that, that I don't think we should define the, I mean, I, I, my opinion was that we should look what are the existing things and maybe uh, make them more uh, public or expose them, in, in, like you said here, but not to define what we think there needs to be a SIG because that's uh, really hard to move. It's like every time you create a SIG, it will cause a lot of burden on on having that SIG uh, maintained. So, so if if the, someone finds uh, finds out that there is a need for another SIG and they have good reason to create it, then it should should come up as an option. But not to define in advance that we need these five SIGs and then we need to go and find the people that fits them. It's just to reflect what exists now and not to to do something more because. Uh, otherwise, we'll have a. I, I don't see myself or people here working in the in the environment that they will work in multiple SIGs, or it's not clear how it will work. And and then and one of the one of the examples was here that like I think Daniel uh, was taken as an example because he's like taking care of a lot of of uh, closely on the CI, but it also has. Uh, is starting other areas of uh, of the infra and and so on. So so it doesn't have to be two six. It can be the same six because the same people are working on there. That's it. Something like that. This is what I remember at least. Yeah, Andrew, do you want to chime in? Yeah, um, I, I think I agree with Ed, and that makes a lot of sense. Just to yeah have like first steps populate a couple of SIGs and then on a case by case basis as they're needed i think make the SIGs. but um ed you said something and i think this has been uh, come up a couple of times this idea of like the burden of the SIGs, and um uh i feel like with nine people in the room we might have nine different ideas of what that burden might be so it might be worthwhile um uh just right now having a quick kind of chat like what hat how do exactly do we see what the workload is these things because from my perspective it's very very small um i'd love to hear what other people have to, what their uh, perceptions of it would be and we can add that to the agenda and talk about it later rather than uh, going over its point that's I, but I think that's what uh, Lee wants to say. What is a SIG? How do I? I mean, I will expect this to be a generic uh, part of the generic de definition and the implication of what is a SIG. Yeah, we we can potentially talk about about that in the next point. Um, that there is a PR posted at the moment with a kind of introductory kind of couple of paragraphs, um, mostly copied from the Kubernetes documentation, but it sets out loosely what is expected. Um, so we can we can talk about that in a second and talk about the burden. But I, I kind of agree with Andrew. I, I expect it to be minimal, or as minimal as we can make it um, for folks. Um, I, I don't expect it to be a massive time sink. 
and I would hope, or I don't, not hope, but I can definitely envisage multiple people, uh, people being involved in multiple SIGs as a result, um, even if they're chairs, but if, even if they're leading like a particular SIG, um, it's hopefully not a massive like time sink, so they don't have any time to participate anywhere else. Um, but yeah, and in, Ed, in terms of like the addition of SIGs, um, yeah, when we talked about it two weeks ago, I, th I thought it was made clear that we would be very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, cautious when adding SIGs um, in this initial kind of set. We don't want to kind of overpopulate things. Um, there are a couple of additions in the PR that we'll talk about in a bit um, that I think are reasonable and it's all open to debate. It's a draft PR. Um, so we can definitely remove things if, if, if folks want to just start with as minimal as possible. Um, but yeah, it, it needs to be, there needs to be a need for the SIGs really. Um, we, we shouldn't just be adding SIG whatever to the list um, just because someone's asked for it. SIG instance types being the example that kicks all of this off. Um, cool. Um, I think someone else pinged as well. Sorry. It's my, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Um, so just my two cents about this. Um, first of all, I very much agree with beginning with a small set of SIGs uh, as minimal as possible. Uh, second of all, if, if we want to have a definition, I think we can have one, but it should be relatively broad. Something like a large enough group of people that are interested in blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's just a broad definition that it's, it's not, um, that can, can be, you know, stretched. Um, and another thing that uh, that's pretty interesting uh, that happens in the Kubernetes side is the charter uh, concept. Um, so basically, um, every SIG needs to define uh, a charter, which basically specifies what the scope is, um, who are the approvals, um, I don't know, and general uh, yeah, general definitions about the SIG. Maybe we can start off with a minimal set and then if somebody wants to add a sig uh, they need to add something like um, a charter proposal or something like that or some kind of a document that would explain what's the need for the new sig um like or what's the scope of it and so on uh, in, in kubernetes it seems pretty nice because it it helps uh, understand what what the sig's scope is and, and so on Yeah, definitely, um, and that that's part of the initial proposal here for the the overview of SIGs. And going back to my initial point about how to go forward with this, maybe even populating the list of SIGs and then writing a charter for one of the SIGs to begin with uh, might be a useful exercise, just so we set out what we expect to be in a charter potentially and what's expected to be covered there. Like the the, the text I've mostly copied from Kubernetes kind of sets out like a, a, a small list of things. Um, I think the example chart that they've got in the repo is lots and lots of things. So maybe that's an exercise to go through and trim that down to the bare essentials that we feel are needed for Kubernetes. Because yeah, there's a lot of stuff in, in there that probably isn't going to apply to us that applies to Kubernetes. Um, did someone else raise their hand? I, apologies, it's really difficult for me to share my screen and keep up with people raising hands and stuff. So um, yeah, feel free to ch chime in at pause as well. Um, Cause I, yeah, it's struggling to go back and forth here. Okay, doke. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, let's, let's move on and talk about this introductory kind of section then. Um, we don't have to go through it in detail now, but yeah, it, 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 it does cover um, the charter aspects. It covers, um like the loose kind of uh, not the loose areas but um the example kind of areas that could be covered here both vertical or horizontal and project wide um so going back to daniel's comment earlier like the scale the project wide sigs probably won't mar marry up to individual sub projects so scale for example might not um or testing or release um but yeah i'd, I'd kind of expect the ver the the vertical groups to, to definitely kind of marry up to some projects or if not multiple projects um, and even the horizontal ones as well might only apply to certain certain projects sub projects um, 
to do there's no about organization this is all up for debate in the PR as well um it's probably not the best forum to kind of have an open debate about individual bits of this description um in, in the meeting but um yeah any and all kind of thoughts on this in the PR would be appreciated Ed go ahead just a question so I think it was asked uh, last week, but uh, I don't know if anyone answered it because you were not here. <laughs> so um, I understand. Um, in this is this talk is internal, right? To to DNV actually, it's only us here, right? Uh, yeah. Well, the, the meeting's public, but I think okay. the audience is so, only CV. Okay, so. If it's like, what will be this, uh, the added value? I understand the teams because the currently the people that are working on the project are uh, splitted into teams that are uh, the vertical teams that you see here, right? Yep. That's the, that's the current, uh, if we take the people that are working closely are based on the vertical thing. Most of the people are not working closely as, as part of the horizontal for sure. But the project, I think some do, but not. I think maybe only Daniel and uh, is working. There is some parts that there are uh, close. But what is the objective of having a SIG in a horizontal? Why, why do we need a SIG? That's, that's my question. Well, cross team. So, like, even the vertical teams don't marry up to. Even if you take downstream teams, they, like that, the, there are compute network and storage teams, but there's also infra. There's also um, various other groups as well um, that aren't necessarily included there. Um, and in my mind, like the horizontal ones, it's just going to be you know multiple different people from multiple different downstream teams. That's why we have. A horizontal call downstream. Um, like you need, you need cross projects and collaboration as well for specific areas and thoughts. Um, so I definitely see that being value upstream and also providing, you know, the same kind of mapping cross team uh, for different areas. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, but I, I'm, I'm trying. Okay. I'm trying to understand what, what you are trying to solve by having this. Like, do you want people to meet uh, regularly? You want uh, you want some subject to be discussed frequently uh, every, every period of time? I'm not. What is the objective of of just splitting it now? And we didn't have it until now. What will what will happen better from now on? That's that's why I guess my question. Um, what will it, what will it solve? So at a horizontal, at a vertical level, um, right, like within Kiva, Kiva especially, um, breaking up responsibility for different areas of the code and hopefully improving code review, maintenance, all of that kind of stuff um, by having smaller groups owning, you know, smaller areas of the code instead of um, a small list of approvers owning all of the code um, and things trudging along. Um, at a relatively small, slow pace. Um, the horizontal stuff, it, it's, how can I say this nicely? Um, like the, the mapping of teams, downstream teams to upstream in Cuba at the moment is, it's not a joke. It's, it, I personally don't think it's working very well and that that needs to be horizontal kind of, you know, um, collaboration and coordination happening more. Um, like the idea that there's not already a mechanism for that happening every release in Qvert seems weird to me coming from OpenStack, where um, like even across projects in OpenStack, we'd all get together per release and coordinate and collaborate on things. Um, and having no mechanism really for that in Qvert already, um, is weird and SIGs go part of the way to, to helping that and having a forum 
for certain things. Um, I don't think we have a SIG architecture kind of proposed at the moment, um, but you know, potentially having a forum um, where we can kind of talk to you know issues across multiple vertical teams, I think is a, is a win and a, and, a, and a bonus for the, the project going forward upstream. Um, and I'm not picking on anyone and it, just because you're talking, but like the hot plug thing at the moment, like the, the different implementations that we've got from different teams, like maybe if we'd already had a space where that could, at, a, at a cross team level that could have been discussed upstream earlier, then maybe we wouldn't end up with two different implementations. I don't know. It's That's the kind of thing I'm hoping to, um, I think it will potentially avoid going forward by having horizontal kind of groupings and stuff. Does that make sense? Yes, I think uh, I can I can share that in other project the, the previous my previous project. What happened is that the maintainers just got together. They had a weekly or bi weekly meeting. They were they were meeting. So the it's like the vertical six maintainers were meeting every period of time and were discussing everything that is cross uh, cross project, like all the horizontal things that you show here. That was that solution. They didn't have six there, but they had only the the maintainers. Um, so it was like a maintainer meeting. But yeah, that's the six are more uh, more like the Kubernetes thing. Yeah, and it's just making it open to to all contributors as well to kind of you know collaborate across across different groups essentially. Um, if we do end up with SIG architecture, so. Um, I did hear a ping in the background. Um, go ahead. Yeah, just just wanted maybe to to give an example for something like that. So maybe we have, for example, a scalability problem, and the scalability problem is not um, strictly related to storage or network or something like that, but it's more of a problem that exists in in multiple layers of a project, and we want to aim at you know improving scalability in a sense. So uh, we can turn into compute seek or network seek, and it's the same with like large architectural changes. For example, uh, maybe we need you know a few people from different um, vertical seeks in order to really discuss that. So I think it is valuable because I mean the scope of only networking or only compute or anything like that is is not yeah. Doesn't doesn't always reflect reality. And and another thing that I wanted to say is that um, maybe currently um, the vertical six um, really are, you know, are really similar to our teams inside Red Hat basically. But it doesn't have to be this way. So for example, I don't know. Maybe in the future we'll have I don't know, I don't know SIG security or uh, whatever. Um, so 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 it doesn't have to be. Uh, uh, like by, by the, the separation that we have inside Red Hat. And I think, by the way, that people can um, relate to a few, to, to multiple SIGs. Uh, like um, you, you could be part of networking and compute SIG, for example. Yeah, definitely in computer storage as well, um, or you know any of the other SIGs. Um, yeah, I definitely see that happening. Um, probably not sharing multiple six, <laughs> but definitely involved. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, we are halfway through the time slot and two items in. So, um, yeah, again, um, any and all PR comments, reviews, whatever, um, are welcome and appreciate at the moment, even if it's draft. Um, so, if, yeah, folks do have further comments on that initial text. Um, feel free to go to the PR um, and add stuff. Um, just moving on, if that's okay. Um, so one thing that Fabian suggested in a comment, um, I think in the previous meeting or it came up while I was out, um, was the introduction of SIG governance to oversee this entire process, so a meta SIG. Um, I am not necessarily against it. Um, I wasn't sure if uh, he wanted it populated by the current maintainers um, who currently have responsibility for this kind of stuff. Um, and um, I, yeah, I wasn't sure if we just, again, wanted to kind of follow 
um, the Kubernetes approach to the life cycle of SIGs and how um, the I think it's the steering committee potentially kind of oversee that that process. Um, yeah, does it, does anyone have any objections to that? Um, it's it's a bit meta. It can probably wait until towards the end of this process once we've got um, you know some initial kind of um, things written down, well the initial list and stuff like that moving forward. Um, but does are there any objections to that idea? Um, and any other comments on the other questions that I've listed there? That makes sense to me. Just to yeah, have something there and to move on and come back to it when you know, other people are interested. Totally. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that by going through the process, we get people interested in helping you know maintain things going forward. Um, so the, the list of people, while it's initially the maintainers list, might be people on this call eventually who, who kind of take the responsibility of looking after the process going forward. Um, yeah, I, do, I, I don't want to kind of tie the maintenance of this and the SIGs themselves to the, the list of maintainers forever. Like it's it's important that we populate initially from Absolutely. maintainers and improvers, but you've got to grow it. Like that's that's actually part of the the, the justification for doing this as well. That I forgot to mention, Ed, is also kind of organically growing um, the list of people that can um, prove code into the code base uh, while keeping it, you know, very targeted um, and safe. <laughs> Hopefully, everyone involved going forward um, without just giving, you know let people overall access to approve things across um, the entire project code base um, for each of the projects. Well, it's the, the part with the, the approval is like, if you if by this you will fix the problem that someone can, uh, does it need, for example, uh, I mean, let's take Kubernetes as an example. If someone adds a feature and he has a pod in a specific thing, and then he adds a test in the end-to-end -end test folder, right? Mm. They need two approvals. I mean, they need an, the approval in that test folder, and they need the approval in their their feature SIG or something like that. And if they are touching more SIGs, that are handled by multiple uh, owners, they need approval from everyone. So there is no root, almost no roots uh, maintainers there, no roots approvers. If that you, you will fix the, the current state by by that, then it will be a nice, uh, in, from my perspective, it will be a nice uh, addition. Because currently, if someone adds, does work on uh, storage and then he adds, some changes in the end-to-end -end tests. There is no there is no approval for the test, for example. So they will just it's up to them, up to that maintainer. Uh, there is how would I say it? There is no enforcement on the interest of the test, for example. It's, I I don't think owners works like that at the moment. I, I don't know yeah, if you can. Does it definitely work like that? So if you have multiple SIGs labeled, every like an approver from each of the SIGs actually has to approve? If, yes, if, if you are not a root approver. If you are, if you are a root approver, oh, then it's right. a problem. Okay, yeah. But if you have like a, there, you can define, for example, a folder that will say, uh, I I don't care who is the root approver, I, I override it with the that folder own approval, something like that. Yeah. And then, then they will, uh, if someone touches files there, they will, they must get approved, approved from these, uh, these uh, approvals. Awesome. Yeah, I think that root approver thing has probably confused me in the past. Looking at Kubernetes, because like Dems or someone will approve something, and he's definitely a root approver. And it would just we are all. The there thing. are all approvers, root approvers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Hopefully that finer grain approach as well. Um, a grain approach allows yeah more, more oversight as well into things that are coming into you know a specific area of the code base by people who are well versed in that specific area of the code base uh, be it a package or tests like you said um eventually i don't know yeah that, that's the kind of one of the final steps in here is talking about um breaking up cubit um the onus files there um but that's late in the process for all of this but 
hopefully by the time we get there we've got enough six populated where you know we we can get that kind of coverage and that kind of value from it that would be good um cool uh okay so um the PR that I keep talking about as a whole also introduce and introduces, removes, and modifies a whole load of SIGs. Um, it's probably better to look at this. Um, in terms of what we've been talking about today, it does add SIG API and SIG observer, observability, if I can talk, um, and release. But re release exists already and is. I think that's going to be a given that that has to be there because um, people are already kind of working um, within it. API and observability, given what's been talked about on the call today, I'm happy to drop for now. And potentially, they, they can, more API can potentially be like an initial kind of um, run through of whatever process we come up with for adding new SIGs and um, how that's going to work. Um, I think personally, I think it would be valid to have that eventually, but it doesn't need to be initial initial set. So, uh, unless there's any objections, I can I can get rid of that. Um, so my vote is to um, drop SIG API but keep SIG observability. Um, I think that observability is a very scoped subject, and you know there's a, a few people that are expert experts on this field, and I think that a lot of people aren't and need their help so i think it makes sense but i'd okay. like to hear about the thoughts um hang on you're saying drop sig api initially yeah um and like i personally think it would be useful to have but we could potentially use it as the initial kind of example addition workflow sig um so by removing it from this initial set, we're kind of, I'll take on the work then once we've defined how to add a new SIG to run through that process to add SIG, SIG API initially and prove that there's a justification for it. Okay. Like I wonder um, what's the difference between SIG API and SIG architecture? Well, architecture is going to encompass well, but do we have a SIG architecture? First of all, most, I forget. Um, uh, I don't think there is one. There's not. Um, yeah, so at the beginning, there's no SIG architecture. But um, even if there was a SIG architecture, or we we do introduce a SIG architecture, I would uh, assume that like architecture is going to encompass a lot more than just the layout of the API. It's going to, you know, how the services are laid out. Uh, within a particular project, um, or the kind of architecture of multiple projects as well, like how they interact, be it like HCO, deploying, either, or yeah, that kind of that kind of aspect. Okay, so so thinking about this again, I'm not sure. I just thought that we do have SIG architecture. Um, yeah, it's a good question. Maybe we can have one SIG for both subjects as a starting point. Um, or maybe we can drop them all together. I don't know. Uh, so, if if you want to, if you if you feel strongly that observability needs to be in there, I'll include it for now and put you as the chair. <laughs> but no, I'll, I'll include it for now. Um, and like I said, we need an example sig to run through this process with uh, once we've actually defined how to add things. So, I'm more than happy to do that with API to begin with. We can even follow up with architecture as well if we think it's valid. Um, yeah, I, or, or we drop both of them and go through the process with both of them. I don't know. Um, yeah, these these you know, two are on the yeah, chopping block anyway. Yeah, thinking about this again, I mean, you convinced me. We did say we, we'll go with the minimal set and then only add what we need to add. So let's go with it all the way. Let's drop both and, and go through the process and really assess this again and think if we need them or not. I just, I just, Back if you have people that can be assigned there because even if even if the subject sounds like it's needed, like for example, SIG API sounds like a really good uh, potential SIG, you need to see if you can assign someone there. Like that's like if yeah. you don't have people that really are are 
will be available there. There is no point to have this thing. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I definitely know a group downstream who are talking about API kind of stuff at the moment quite well. And um, there are definitely folks upstream from other companies who are interested in API stuff as well. But you make a valid point, and, and that's part of the part of the process of um, applying to add a SIG is going to be proving that you potentially have folks interested um, in, in joining. Um, I forget what the process is for Kubernetes if you have to kind of like put, uh, like advertise to the mailing list first or something or some forum that you'd like to create a SIG and looking for kind of potential members. Um, but that, that could be part of the process. So just like, just, you know, these folks, these three or four folks or who, whomever have shown interest um, in populating this and that's part of the justification. By the way, um, are we sure that every SIG needs like a, a weekly meeting and, and everything? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, maybe we can... 100% no. <laughs> Def definitely not. Right. Yeah, uh, daily stand-ups, right? Isn't it? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I, honestly, I, I think um, this kind of comes back to like the SIG is really just like a map of people who have subject knowledge and I don't see any reason why they like if something comes up they can have an ad hoc meeting about something specific with this release but yeah please I do not think we need weekly meetings or any kind of like um, grouping other than maybe a mailing list um, quick assign just kind of like a, a group and um, uh, people in a known as file so they can be pinged on a PR and that's really as complicated as it needs to be in my humble opinion yeah agreed agreed just as loose yeah. at least as people want it and if people find the need for, for meetings or um, you know any kind of other kind of cadence of thing then they're free to do it yeah by the way, in, in Kubernetes, um, like for example, when you uh, when you have a PR, uh, you might need to get approved from uh, from some different six. So for example, somebody can say like uh, I don't know from SIGNode, somebody LGTMs your PR and and like takes another guy from SIG Docs to LGTM Docs part, and he like links a guy from SIG Security to look at the security aspect of your PR, and you actually need an approval from every one of the six that's relevant to your work in order to, to merge it. Um, so I, I really, I, I, tr I, I absolutely agree with the definition of like mapping between uh, the SIG itself to a group of people that can actually look at the work and, and approve it or something like that. Um, yeah, maybe we can do something similar in Kubrick. Like, for example, if a PR is both related to storage and network, we would need people from both SIGs to actually approve it before it, it, it gets in. Yeah, and that's what Ed was talking about before, um, by mapping out owners files to specific areas, like file directories and for actual code locations in a tree. Um, you can you can get that kind of behavior. Um, so that when certain files are touched, you know, you get you, you get review from people. I don't know if it just works if things are labeled, like generically, if it, it's not touching a specific piece of code, but you still want another SIG to look at it, if you can just label the SIG and thus you need approval from that SIG. That would be cool if it did. Um, but yeah, that, that's definitely that's definitely the kind of behavior we're going for. Sorry. Yeah, sure so if I understand correctly, what's what's happening in Kubernetes is, is that if you touch specific files, the bot adds like um, a SIG label to your PR, but people can add this these labels you know manually if they want to. So oh, okay. that, yeah. Yeah, so you get that behavior. Um, without specific code being touched, then, yeah, that would be that would be awesome um, for some things. Um, well, we have it in networking. Cool. Cool. Okay. Um, okay well, uh, the, uh, sorry. Go on. Can, can I jump in for um, this? Is potentially a contentious uh, question. Um, so the idea of if. Uh, that in my raise of like, if you've got say SIG dog, SIG security, and they all need to um, have their approval on there. How strict do you see this being? Um, and I'd, I'd see it as like an LGTM, not an approve. The approval will be done by the, like the core SIG, the vertical SIG uh, person for that repo. But um, like if 
uh, like, would you like want to be extremely strict about if it's been tagged uh, to review from one of those SIGs, then it cannot be merged without the um, the the thumbs up from someone in that horizontal SIG? Or is it like more of a nice to have as in, it would be good if the people from these SIGs can review this. So I think that in Kubernetes, it's a requirement. But on the other hand, I think that um, people with high enough privileges can simply take down the label, right? So um, if I look at your PR and, and yeah, an and automatic label is being added, say it says saying that somebody from the docs team need to have a look, but I see that you only change something really small or something like that regarding the docs, I can just remove the label and, and say like, uh, that's okay, it's not needed. Um, I think that not everybody should be allowed to do that, maybe only approvers or something like that. But I think that the answer is yes, in Kubernetes it's it's required. Yeah, I think Ed suggested that the core set of approvers, so in the, the root owners file for the project, can override and just approve something globally without need for the individual SIGs to approve. Ed, correct me if that's wrong, but um, I'd assume we want that behavior so that the the kind of core set of approvers still have overall overall control. Um, but the mechanism will hopefully allow more code to flow through the project because you know we're we're handing out responsibility um, to these smaller groups that potentially can get there before the core group um, to review things. So yeah, we'd still get the behavior that we have at the moment of that core set just being able to move things in if they need to. Cool, cool. Just make sure they're all on the same page in that one. Yeah, I really need to go and look at the owner stuff again because uh, I, I always forget the behavior of it. And looking at Kubernetes doesn't help sometimes because I think that behavior, that core approver behavior, is sometimes used and it just can, yeah, that's confused me in the past. Right, we have 15 minutes left of the call and still a couple of um, items to go through. So um, I'm going to move on. I've captured an action item just to go back and drop API and observability from that PR. Um, yeah, if if other folks want to look at the PR and again comments, reviews, welcome. Even though it's draft, um, that would be appreciated. Um, and I'll keep trying to move that forward. Um, I will probably end up squashing a few things together. It's very verbose with com commits at the moment, but that's that's um, yeah. I've worked with Garrett too long, so that's just how I work. Um, so moving on to the next item then. So um, just following up from last week, um, there was a discussion I think about. Um, adding um, a SIG, like a, an overall SIG repo um, to kind of um, collect and collate um, a lot of this kind of collateral stuff about um, the overall list of SIGs and the um, the charters uh, and the mappings and all that kind of stuff. Was that actually agreed to or was that just a suggestion? And um, yeah, does anyone object to it? Do, do people think we should or shouldn't do it? Um, yeah, I'm just following up. Um, I had a quick chat with Daniel uh, Hill last week, either before or after this meeting. Um, and I think the idea of having it in another, so it kind of comes back to the orgs.yaml file. Um, and I think at the moment, what we're going to do is he's moved that to its own folder so that it can have its own uh, permission set to it. And so you can have a SIG repo, but not necessarily have its own like repo. So at the moment, we'll just see how that goes having a group of people who have the capacity to uh, create an obsolete repos without the need for it to be, it, it's still in project info. So then I can drop that um, that PR link if you want to have it somewhere in my sea of tabs. Yeah, if you could, yeah. Um, okay, that, that makes sense. Because yeah, and I know that part of the, the, the discussion was about specifically um, repo creation. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't sure if like all the metadata about um, SIGs would also be part of that repo or not. But yeah, just keeping everything separated at the moment between project info and then the, the stuff that we talked about earlier remaining in community, like the PR above remaining in community makes sense for now. Because um, so I, I think that's pretty much the same with Kubernetes. I, we don't need to copy everything they do, but yeah, I think for now that probably makes sense with that. Cool. Um, we've already really spoken about the charters part. Um, so yeah, I probably need to add this to that initial section. I can 
definitely post an example um, in the community PR potentially for the next call, probably on, based on commute, uh, commute, compute. Um, if uh, if people think that would be useful, um, just so we can start looking at that as well. Um, cool. So um, we need to talk about that. Any comments on the, the charters aspect? Okay. Uh, yeah, the Slack channel um, discussion. Um, I just asked Daniel if we did have any option to do it. Okay. Ah, cool. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so there is a mechanism, the um, the link that I put there about requesting channel. So we can request a channel, but uh, the um, I think whoever I think Daniel's correct. I wasn't here for it, but it was probably a bit difficult to get um, Kubernetes virtualization um, with sub projects of Kubernetes. But it might be a bit of a stretch for us to start putting like multiple Kubert SIG Slack channels in what is already a, a pretty big workspace. So we may need to create it in the CNCF workspace, but we can, um, we've got a good, um, uh, what's the word? We've got a good reason to create yeah. one and start with that. Then we can go through this requested channel and take it from there. Okay, yeah, I can potentially try that again with SIG Compute um, and see how far in the process we get before they yeah, before it will grind still hold up, that's fine. Cool, thank you. Cool, and then, uh, yeah, so the final point, it, yeah, it, eventually, I don't think this is gonna happen for a week or two, at least. Um, but yeah, once, once a few of the things above are kind of um, move forward a little bit, um, I'll definitely start with a PR um, to kind of rework the, the owner's files a little bit than Qbert, Qbert. Um, I do have one already um, that is introducing SIG Compute. There was initially SIG instance type and that, that's what started all of this. Um, so I'll probably, I'll probably reuse that one. But um, yeah, and again, that probably just spe specifically using Compute um, to kind of populate that um, to begin with just for the, the compute aspects of Qbert. Um, cool. Which is, um, I think I said this in last week's meeting, the more we've talked about this, the more I do not understand Fabian's um, point of view of saying that instance type doesn't fall into having its own seek because it seems to be exactly what we're talking about in these meetings, the need for like a cross vertical SIG knowledge uh, domain amongst a, a small group of people. Um, it, it seems to fit the bill perfectly. So I, I don't understand. Um, Never a new push for it. There will be. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this whole process is to prove it. There's a need for it. I'm just taking the really long route around doing it. But um, bless you, Lee. Bless you. Yeah. No, it's cool. I, I don't mind doing this kind of stuff. It, it helps everyone and it helps me eventually. So, um, yeah, I think, yeah, once we've worked through the process with compute and like with API and observability, we've gone through that process. And um, yeah, I think proving the need for an instance type kind of SIG. Um, However short-lived it might end up being, because um, you know, SIGs don't necessarily live forever. They they live as long as the interest um, persists within a group of people to kind of look after a certain area of code, and it could be that it's it's inherited eventually by compute or something. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's been my goal all along, Andrew. So thank you for kind of backing backing that that thought process up a little bit. That's good. Um, cool. We have eight minutes left. Um, I've not really talked about SMEs or anything this week. Um, I know there was a discussion about it last week. Um, I'm kind of inclined to kind of ignore SMEs until we've sorted out the SIG kind of aspect. And if at the end of the SIG kind of discussion and workflow here, um, we find that there is still some you know missing coverage of things that SIGs aren't covering and that maybe one person in the entire community can cover. Uh, maybe we then touch upon SMEs again, but 
I think there's enough to be getting on with above uh, for myself and anyone else that wants to review and help out. So, um, yeah, hopefully there's no objections to me just ignoring SMEs for now. I know Fabian's not here. Well, I don't think Fabian's here. Um, but, yeah, hopefully that's um, that's not offensive to anyone. But I'm, I'm just skipping it. Cool. Um, excellent. Uh, does anyone have any comments, questions, any additional items they want to talk through this week? Um, any concerns with the approach or anything? Now is your time um, before we end the call. Excellent. I will take the silence as total and utter agreement uh, with everything that I've dictated today. Um, thank you all for joining, especially the hour early. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you all. And uh, we'll continue next week, hopefully, with a bit, a few more things progressed. Uh, the PR is kind of more progressed and things fleshed out. And we'll keep on trudging forward until we get Sig instance types. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everyone. Catch you next week. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Great work. See you.